In the summer of 2012, I was on course to join a bold climbing expedition in the north of Afghanistan. The plan was to enter via peaceful Tajikistan, to travel familiar roads through the mountain town of Korog, where I would cross the border. It wasn't to be so simple. About to set off from the capital Dushanbe, I was met by stories from those fleeing the violence in Korog. People spoke of tens of dead, but were hopeful that a ceasefire called by the Aga Khan would hold. In the Badakhshan Autonomous Region, tensions have remained high since a bloody civil war ended over two decades past. As it would later transpire, violence had been precipitated by the assassination of Major General Abdullah Nazarov of the local Tajik KGB branch. The lucrative smuggling of heroin and cigarettes close to the border town is controlled by a delicate interplay between corrupt officials and the local mafia. On this occasion, speculation suggests that Nazarov may have asked for one payment too many, leading to his murder and the movement of hundreds of Tajik army forces into the Badakhshan region. Two days after the assassination, the stage was set, and in the following days of fighting, credible estimates put the eventual death toll at approximately 140 killed. Of course, from Dushanbe, I had just arrived to start my expedition. I wanted to fly my paraglider, and we had no news whatsoever of what had happened. Is this, this, this way? You see where the river splits? Um, we've met a lot of people who have come from Korog and have some very funny stories about it. To be honest, all the information at the moment is so so mixed that it's really hard to know what to do. Um, but I think you can see I'm tired and I smell uh, and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and I don't think Korog is safe. So maybe I will go to the Bartang Valley, but uh, I don't think um, I can make contact with the team, which is really annoying me. After getting 50 kilometers from Korog, I changed my plans. I went to the north of the country and started in a new Vol bivouac route. So here we are, day one. It's about six in the morning. I walked up last night. I'm quite nervous actually. Um, the Zarafshan Valley runs for about 200 kilometers uh, to the right. Um, and the Uzbek border is about two or three kilometers this way along the top of the ridge. It's going to be an interesting day's find. I've been looking at this route for years. It was 500 kilometers of mountains towards the east. Even by 12 o'clock, there was no cumulus. The air was dry, dusty, and inverted.
that's pretty much the end of the first day. Uh, 16 kilometers. There's some guys behind me from the army over here. Um, I managed to come down in a, uh, a village which had an army base. So, uh, really not looking forward to seeing these guys. <laughs> I spent 10 very stressful hours with these guys and the KGB. They thought I'd come from Uzbekistan illegally. I was very, very relieved when I eventually was let go. With the thought of what had just happened still etched on my mind, I was keen to walk up into the hills. Above the town of Aini, I pushed up steep slopes where a young boy kept company only by his flock of goats called me over offering tea and bread. You feel so good around here. Ah, right, man. Thank you. Clearly concerned, the boy offered yet more bread and sweets before scraping some ice from a nearby snowbank to make tea. A few recycled tea leaves complemented the colour of dirt from the ice, but full to the brim with sugar is just what this Englishman needed. After showing him a few photos of what I've been doing, I wondered if his parents would ever believe the story about who came to tea. I continued onwards, higher into the fresh air, to sleep next to an abandoned madrasa. I watched the sun go down, dreaming of the possibilities of the next day's flying. So, uh, last night it rained. <laughs> but I have to say, this wing is... Um both probably one of the better sleeping bags that I've had and um, did keep me perfectly dry. First hundred K. I wish I gave more credit to the strangers that welcome me into their home. Sometimes it feels wrong to pull out a camera. They fed me well, sent me on my way, but didn't quite understand why I wanted to leave this paradise so early in the morning. That down there is a village I stayed at. And uh, they didn't really understand that I had to leave early in the morning. Uh, it's uh, just gone seven and um, as you can see it's uh, Beautiful day in the mountains, but I'm already sweating hard. It's pretty hot already. Um, I've got a long way to go up before I can start.
man. I think I flew for about three hours today. 80k. I also had a really big frontal today. Um, it completely horseshoed. Uh, one side opened, spun me around 180 degrees. A lot of what brings me back to these mountains is the generosity of the people. There was no way I was going to refuse tea. Anyway, he had fun reading the map, not understanding the relationship between the places printed on it. Just uh, just to the west of Jogoto, so it's um, it's going to be a short walk to uh, civilization. Of course, it wasn't going to be that easy. This guy walking around, shaking hands with everyone, well, he's got an army uniform. He arrested me, but at least he fed me, gave me somewhere to stay, and uh, again, I was soon on my way. It's uh, coming up for 10 o'clock, and uh, there's no cumulus whatsoever. I can't even... Behind me, about 25 kilometers that way, is a beautiful range of mountains which you can't see because the air is so dirty. If you hadn't already guessed it, those mountains which I'm pointing to are the ones that I just flew down from, the ones where I got arrested at the foot. I'd walked two days to get up here, and I now had had to walk up the side of this mountain simply to cross the river on the other side. I don't know if you can see, but just uh, just above my head is uh, Peak Ismail Simoni, 7,400 meters. Um, I've come up the mountain today. Um, it's only 10 o'clock, and I think it's partly to do with the fact there was some rain last night, but there's cloud everywhere. Um, and so early in the day, I'm, I'm reluctant really to take off into this. <sighs> This is the reality of all bivouac sometimes. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Dad, 
There's a bit of a back wind. So last night it rained really, really hard again. Um, I don't know what day it is, but it's, uh, it's day three on this same bit of mountain for me. Um, and like I say, I'm running out of food. So I think this is naturally the end of the road, unless I can get over that pass tomorrow, today.